welcome to uh, the numerical ship and offshore hydrodynamics. Today we have the uh, lecture 5. So, today we are going to discuss this uh, the following topics. First, we uh, give a brief overview of the flow chart. Uh, if you remember in the, my last class, what we have discussed that if I have a uh, differential equation, then how to get the velocity and displacement. Now, today we are just going to discuss a, a brief flow chart about the whole process. Okay. Uh, how to solve the equation of motion and uh, from, from the scratch. And then we are going to discuss something about that uh, frequency domain and time, time domain solution method. Okay. And finally, we are going to discuss about the RAOs and natural time period. So, here I would like to say that, that we touch only the very basic thing that is required for this particular course. Okay. So, let us see the, uh, the flow chart. Okay, of course, and uh, these are the keywords that you are going to use to get this lecture. Now, let us get back to the flow chart. Now, at start you can see that we assume the initial condition that all forces equals to 0 and then all the velocity equal to 0 and also the acceleration also equals to 0. So, V equal to 0, V dash equal to 0, F equal to 0. Now, in this position what you are going to calculate? the A which is the added mass, the hydrodynamic force, the damping force B, the restoration force C. In fact, this C actually you do not have to calculate each steps unless it is uh, in a nonlinear problem or, or, or for A and B also. Essentially, what you are going to calculate is the exciting force at each time step F. And after that actually uh, we can write the total force we are going to discuss in a later on later stage of today that how we are writing the total forces. And then we solve this total force if you remember in the last class which is m x double dot equal to f and then we are getting the velocity and the next time steps and then we are getting the uh, displacement and the next time step. So, we, then we can increase the time level t and again we can again we can go back and again we can calculate the uh, the added mass uh, B, C, F, M in case of a nonlinear problem and in case of a linear problem only the exciting forces. Okay. So, uh, today uh, let us do some, some uh, work using a piece of paper. Now, uh, we are going to discuss about the equation of motion. Now, if you uh, remember I said just few minutes back there is a two way of writing it one is in time domain and one is a frequency domain. Before that let me write the equation of motion that actually we discussed in my first slide. Uh, it is a coupled equation of motion we have the summation uh, let us say uh, okay, um, any, any index does not matter you can just start with uh, anything. Uh, Okay, uh, k. I think this is the k we are going to uh, use there in the first slide. So, I am just having the uniformity. So, it can be anything i, j, k does not matter. right? So, it is if you remember this m k uh, m j k plus a j k multiplied by x double dot j sorry x double dot k plus b into j into k into x dot k plus c into j into k into x k right and it has applied to all k is equals to f of j which is the exciting force. Now, this is actually how we are writing the equation of motion. Now, here it is a coupled equation as I said we did not discuss about what is the meaning of this j and what is the meaning of the k. I mean uh, why it is here in this equation right we are not today also we do not discuss this very much, but we understand these are something called the modes right. 
and now you remember that we have six modes right one then one refers for the surge right then two refers for the sway three refers for the heave four refers for the roll five refers for the pitch and six refers for the you you know that now let us do one thing here let us not go into all six modes let us pick anything let us pick uh, let us say j equal to 3 and then k is equal to 3. Now, if you use only j equal to 3 and k equal to 3 in this equation, let us see uh, what, what you are getting. Now, remember I am using j equal to 3 and then k equal to 3. So, there is no summation form because we have only using j and k. So, then this equation takes the form m 3 3 plus a 3 3 into x double dot 3 plus b 3 3 into x dot 3 plus c 3 3 into x 3 and equal to f of 3. Right. And then actually this you can say is the equation for heave. Now, similarly, if you put j equal to 4 and then k is equal to 4, then also you can have an equation m 4 4 plus a 4 4 into x double dot 4 plus b 4 4 x dot 4 plus c 4 4 x 4 is equal to f of 4 is the equation for roll. And then if you put j equal to 5 and k is equal to 5. Now, why I am saying this 3, 4 and 5 because these three are most important in CK. So, then we have m 5 5 plus f 5 5 into x double dot 5 plus b 5 5 into x dot 5 plus c 5 5 into x 5 uh, equal to f of 5. Right. In general, now let us start uh, you know uh, and this is of course, for the pitch. Now, uh, let us not uh, use any heave uh, or roll and pitch in general. So, if I omit this modes and then in general we can write the equation motion in single degrees of freedom right see here i am using single degrees of freedom that's why i'm using j and k both same 3 uh, for him and then for the roll it is 4 and for the pitch it is uh, i i take 5 so in general you know we can call this as single degrees of freedom equation of motion and just you can write in this form we just we are not going to write any kind of uh, subscripts only just simply simple equation m plus a x double dot plus b x dot plus uh, c x is equal to f and we can call f exciting force. Now on we are just uh, unless we do the coupled equation of motion we are going with this simple expression of the equation of motion. Okay. <coughs> now, uh, let us let us write it again. Now, what we are going to do is I do not assume this to be a time harmonic that means, what I am trying to tell you that this exciting force now just let us discuss a little bit of physics like you know if you have a sheep over here and you know initially it is perfectly fine like it is statically very much stable like weight is equals to buoyancy and it is stand still and suddenly you know the wave hit the structure and because of this disturbance this sheep start oscillating or also structure start oscillating right. So, therefore, this wave force you can call the exciting force right. 
lot of things can happen again we are going to discuss later or not right now. But what I am trying to tell you if you look at this nature you know it is you can understand that 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 wave that disturb the structure I am assuming it to be harmonic function right. So, so sometimes explicitly we assume this function to be harmonic sometimes we really do not explicitly use the exciting force or the, the term which is disturbing the whole phenomena is a time harmonic. Okay. Now, let us take that we do not assume explicitly this is time harmonic. Right. So, we are not writing this in terms of any sine function or any cos function. We simply say it is a f exciting force it could be harmonic may not be we do not know. Then how I solve this problem? Then what we do is we take this m x double dot which is the inertial force this side and you take all other force in the other side of the equation. So, here I can write it is E x c minus a into x double dot minus b into x dot minus c into x. Though we understand this simply again is a linear because otherwise you really cannot write c into x right. Anyways, now here you know this we call as a radiation force that we discuss right and this is a restoring force. So, this you can call this as a your total force F t. So, that is why it says in this uh, the flow chart. Uh, so, this is actually I mean to say that time like m x double dot now is equals to f into t. Now, once we have this, so after that time then we can get that velocity at next time step t plus delta t this equals to f by m multiplied by delta t plus v at the previous time step or the present time steps and then we can use the x t plus delta t is equal to it is now v t plus delta t we use as you know that I said this is uh, we do for the explicit, but we can do here for implicit scheme plus x into t. Now, this is how actually we are going to do deal with the time domain method, but in case of a frequency domain what we do is we explicitly assume that the forcing function which is the right hand side is a time harmonic function. Now, what is happening in that case we assume that the expression is same right the left hand side is still remains same m plus a into x double dot plus b into x dot plus c x. Now, in the right hand side I am assume it is a it is a harmonic function. So, it has some amplitude f a into e to the power minus i omega t you can take e to the power plus i omega t also and I, I take it to minus i it does not matter you can take anything. Now, if you assume this your forcing term to be harmonic we expect the response also harmonic. So, in that case we assume that my response x that is also a harmonic function and then you can assume this x equal to some amplitude multiplied by minus i omega t term. So, now I substitute this in the left hand side and once we substitute this in the left hand side what we get? We get you can check it is minus omega square into m plus a into xi a plus i into omega sorry minus because I assume the minus i into b into xi a plus c into xi a equal to f a because i omega t terms will cancel out from the both side right. Now, you see here the solution is little bit you can see from is at this expression the solution is little bit uh, straight forward because you can take that xi equal to or xi equal to this f a and then divided by the whole thing which is minus omega square into m plus a and then minus uh, i omega beta uh, b 
and then plus c right now of course now you see it is in a complex domain so of course this should be is equal to some complex number so i just write p plus i q where p and q both are real because when you solve this definitely you are going to get a complex number right now, if you get a complex number then definitely this I take a mod which is get the amplitude of my response right. So, which is uh, the square root of p square plus q square and definitely I am going to see the phase right. And we define this as epsilon and this is nothing but uh, tan inverse q by p. Now, you see once we solve the whole thing we get two things one is the amplitude and then the second thing what you get is the phase right now suppose if you use it uh, you know now you can say that uh, that where is that phase actually are just if i use this complex uh, domain the phase directly comes in comes here right but you know remember if you not very much you know very much what I said that comfortable with this with the complex uh, thing you can assume this to be a uh, harmonic function in uh, sin or cos function also. But remember in that case you have to you know consider the phase also. So, in case of a uh, you know if you in a if you do not you just you want to deal with only the real real part of this or uh, the sin function cos function explicitly that means you want to say that f exciting force equal to some f a into sin or cos omega t ok let us take cos omega t. So, then you have to add explicitly the phase delta and again you repeat the same process and again you come up with the same thing ok. Because now you see like in the right hand side you have the cos omega t term and sin omega t term with the phase epsilon and here also you can get sin omega t term and cos omega t term and therefore, you can just compare the sin term and cos term you will get the same thing that we are getting using the complex number. Why are using the complex number? In complex number you do not have to explicitly find out the, uh, the phase it is comes automatically, but in case of a uh, if you deal with the real number you have to consider this delta. So, just give a small exercise you try to do this and, and then you just uh, say uh, and check that if you are again coming to the same problem or not ok. Now, uh, what we are going to actually get from this exercise ok. Now, you see what we are getting here we are solving this problem. So, we are assuming my forcing function f is equal to we have some amplitude with some frequency omega t right. Now, once we have this frequency omega t and then we are getting some amplitude we call this as a xi a and not only that we are getting some phase epsilon right. So, that means if you that means what are going to say is that means if you have a forcing function uh, with respect to uh, a frequency omega. So, uh, so what we are actually getting with all this exercise ok. Now, what actually do let us see we are using a forcing function f with a amplitude f a and then you know it is a harmonic function with some frequency omega. Right. So, this is my forcing function. So, you can assume this forcing function right now uh, you assume this forcing function is as your waves right. Still we are not uh, do, a, do any any study on the waves and all. So, at this moment assume as a harmonic forcing function right with a frequency omega. Now, if you do that we expect that there is a response right and what is the frequency of the response definitely is omega and then we have this response have a amplitude xi a and also it has a phase epsilon. So, that means let us say we we, we get omega 1 a forcing uh, function is let us say f a 1 
uh, with omega 1 and then because of that we get uh, some some amplitude xi a 1 and also the some phase uh, if epsilon 1. So, that is what we are getting. Now, similarly we, we can let us take the amplitude always same f a 1, but this omega is some another frequency omega 2. Definitely we are going to get a different response that even that response should be different that that amplitude definitely going to be different and therefore, the phase also could be different. So, we keep doing it for n number of frequency. So, making it omega n and then we have that uh, xi a let us say n that and then let us say it is epsilon n. Now, we let us plot it. Now, if we plot this what we get? So, let us plot this graph. Now, in this x axis we have this frequency omega where the omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, omega n all are there and here we are plotting the, the amplitude and sometimes what we what we are going to do is not sometimes most of the time the all the time let us say we divide this by the wave amplitude. So, we are going in the y axis basically the response amplitude divided by the wave amplitude. So, we can say that it is response amplitude divided by the wave amplitude okay. and then we plot the point. So, now let us say for omega 1 this is the response, for omega 2 this is the response from omega 3 this is the response, then omega 4 this is omega 5 this. So, we are going from higher to lower right and then actually we can get a nice plot like this and this we call as RAO. This it is response amplitude operator or sometimes we can call this as a transfer function also because it is the frequency of representation of the amplitude, but this is not all, all everything because you know we have to plot the phase also similar way. Okay. Now, what we what we are going to do is in that case in the left hand side again we have the omega and then in this side we have the angle the phase right. So, here let us take the phase is 0 and then it is let us say minus 80 and then it is a plus 80 180 and then we again try to plot the points here, 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 here kind of this and then we just add it. Now, you see this is this is the only thing that we want all this calculation of the added mass, the damping. Uh, everything that final aim to get this to graph with different frequency what is the my response and what is the phase. Now, this to gives you you know very important information about the ship, what it will tell you that at which frequency the ship might have the peak response right. So, in this case it is let us say here and let us say that moment of time what is the phase. Now, here let us say it is here. So, we can see that at this peak point now let us try to uh, you know physically get the meaning what is actually happening. Here when the response is maximum we can see that there is a 100 degree phase lag. So, what is happening it means that if I try to plot this graph and this phase is with respect to what with respect to my forcing function right. Now, or the eta. Now, here now this is the my forcing function or some this and let us take the response is 180 degree phase. So, this should be the kind of thing. Now, you assume that when you know it has exactly the opposite phase. So, it means that when when this waves is trying to go up the ship is you know, it, it is I mean 
Okay. Let us the most realistic thing. When what I try to say is when let us say this is the mean level. Now, when this wave when this wave is going to going up this fellow the ship is try to go down. Now, you see that what is going to happen because of this. Now, if you if you think physically this what is going to happen is you can have a uh, the slamming that means that bottom can hit the surface and sometimes you can have the green water also what is the meaning of the green water because when it comes down and then waves is piled up and then it can also hit the surface I mean uh, sorry hit the main deck. So, therefore, two, two both the things are possible it can hit here it can hit here and then you can have a severe thing. So, that is why this is very important to understand not only the, the amplitude of the motion, but also the phase. Now, you know it is for frequency domain it is very easy how you can calculate the phase, because you take the amplitude uh, you can get the amplitude you get tan inverse V by A or P A Q by P you will get the phase, but in case of a time domain how are going to fix this. Now, in time domain what at the finally what are getting you get a signal a time domain signal. Now, if you assume I mean if you assume or not if the forcing function harmonic of course, this would be the graph for the forcing function right. And then, then if you calculate the motion then definitely you can see that that motion has this is the signal for the motion. Now, here you clearly you can see there is a difference difference between the peak right we are definitely going to discuss later on like how to calculate in time then, but here just given an idea. Now, this will gives you the phase information and of course, the distance from z equal to 0 like I mean this is a z I mean that z equal to 0 whatever you can see like the distance from this, this gives you the amplitude xi a of the response amplitude. Now, this is how we can find out from the time domain signal we get the time uh, signal we get the signal of the forcing function and then we can find out the, the difference from the difference of the peak time and also from 0 to this we can get the uh, value for the amplitude. So, you see like uh, e even if you use the time domain if you use the frequency domain definitely all the time you can able to draw the RAO as well as the the phase. Okay. So, today uh, we are going to stop here okay. and then uh, from the next class we are still continuing with the same discussion and we will try to find out at uh, you know at which frequency the, the this response could be maximum how to gauge that frequency right which is nothing but the natural time period. Okay. Okay. So, till then thank you very much.